us bugging. Hey guys, our new arrival here is the 1978 Champagne Edition AC. Yes, it's original AC. This is a very rare color called Peach Red. It's uh, definitely the Champagne Edition. See the white interior? It's be cleaned a little bit, but beautiful. Wood grain dash. Uh, we had the gas cap lit off because before the car got here, I needed to match the paint, so that's why that's off. It's a beautiful car. All right, guys. I've got all the tins for the 78 Champagne Edition convertible that I've got the motor in here I've got to assemble. And I've noticed a lot of things that aren't going to work with this setup because it was fuel injected. There's two holes up here that somebody drilled in here. I took those out and put some fiberglass on there and got that looking good. Then I noticed that the tube for the throttle cable, accelerator cable, whatever, came through right here. And it needs to be over here because we are putting on the 38 millimeter two barrel carburetor and we can't have it way over here going over here so I ended up drilling my hole through there wallowing out like the other one couldn't quite get to this one to wall it out I don't know where it's gonna put the tube at the uh, rear but I'll have to figure that out so I've changed that put a plug in here that's just gonna get painted so I got past that issue all right guys this is the tens this is a peach red a very rare original color on one of the champagne editions. I think it's the rarest of all, all the champagne editions, but correct me if I'm wrong. There's the motor. I'm gonna get ready to assemble that. I'm uh, starting the assembly. Uh, the motor has been rebuilt. And as you can see, it's the peach red. It's a very rare color. And this is gonna be a really sweet ride. As you can see, it doesn't have the uh, mechanical fuel pump. This will be one with an electronic fuel pump. I'll be uh, putting all the tins on. I didn't like the one part there that mounts the uh, alternator, so I'm gonna repaint that. And I think I'm gonna go with what I did on Ricky's. I'm gonna matte black that piece, and then you'll see all this. Um, I actually painted it the color of the car, and then I just didn't, didn't like it, and there was some imperfections in it, so I'm gonna redo it. I really like this flat black. It's really good, thick, durable, great finish, so. I've been using that a lot on these builds, on the small parts and everything. So this is gonna be a real pretty car. Um, this motor shouldn't be taking too long to assemble. I had a lot more issues with the uh, 75 trike with the 32, 36 carburetor on it with that 36 horsepower 10 on it. It's the choke. They give you like an eighth of an inch clearance on a stock 10. Well, there is no eighth of an inch. It's not concave, but that's another story. All right, well, that's what I'm gonna be doing with this one. All right, guys, uh, as you can see, I got a little further on Peach Red Convertible Super Beetle. And I'm getting ready for the intake. You know, all about the trimming of the manifold ends. Not gonna have that again like I did on the Dune Buggy. And this is getting a 38 millimeter carburetor, two barrel. So that, it, it's uh, kind of a strange one here. Always something. But uh, the bracket that stabilizes and secures the manifold for the carburetor mounts to the back bolt of the fuel pump, which this is a case that doesn't have that back bolt there, doesn't even have the hole for the fuel pump. So um, I can see that it kind of would reach here for the distributor. I'll just have to cut it in half and extend it and I'll be able to fix that. And then I, it seems to want to hit this. So I might shave a little bit off of the intake so that I can move it forward and get it exactly level. And then I don't like how the manifold wants to come further this way. So I think I'm going to trim a little off this way to bring it more over because I don't want my cable coming out at a, you know, at an angle. He brought his exhaust in here. This is in it. The heater boxes were all like square, squared off, and it was crazy looking connections. And it, it was all related to the fuel injection that this motor originally had on it, which we're not doing. So I had to pull out some of my good heater boxes and sell them to him so that we can set it up because he wants his heater and everything functioning on it. So this is going to be an interesting build. You know, it's got a the AC compressor. This is a real air conditioned one. And uh, got all the brackets up here and everything painted. So it's gonna be a booger putting that in there with this nice painted tin and not scratching everything. And 
They didn't disconnect the lines, so it's hanging, dangling inside the engine compartment. I'm gonna save probably Sunday to do to do the intake and everything. I got a lot of modifications to do. The intake manifold hits the back of this. It needs to be trimmed. I want to get it as close to the alternator as possible, so I'm good in line with my throttle cable. It seems to want to put it more over here. And of course, my best anchor, boat anchor of a compressor is going to be on this side, so I want to have a plenty of space over here. And you know, I get electric fuel pump and then a coil. So it's going to be quite a job getting that bracket and that mounted in there without destroying my tin. So be interesting. But we'll see what happens it'll be on video <laughs> all right guys i got the exhaust on there pulled out my heater boxes sandblast them real quick cast aluminum high temp 500 degree paint on it got my new clamps on looking sweet what we got here is the 1978 carmen champagne edition with the white interior and the white top and a very rare peach red paint job. It's a beautiful car. It's just a little dirty right now. And as you can see, it is an AC car. So that's gonna be quite a booger getting that on there. And uh, you've already seen the motor in here coming together. Tomorrow's gonna be a rain day, so I'm going to get to do the modifications to the intake manifold and get everything positioned to where I want it. And, and I'll be home free on getting this assembled. And next week we'll get the brake in done on it and this was a fuel injected motor so the heater boxes were much different they were like rectangular squared and they were straight and they didn't come up here now I see that this bracket doesn't clear or fit on here I'm assuming it was this way and this is in the way I'm not sure what I'm gonna be able to do with this I gotta figure out how to get that in there yeah another obstacle to get past all right guys Here's where I am. Still got to get the belt on. I'm got to paint that piece of the nut that goes there. I just uh, fitted the carburetor on. I've got to do the linkage and I've got all my brackets in here. There's where the AC goes. So the compressor will be here and that goes like that. It's all ready and then you get in here and finagle that nut on there. That's where I'm at with that. We're shooting for the break-in period to happen this Saturday. So get with this one moving along. All right, guys, it's all ready for the break-in, which will be tomorrow. I have electric fuel pump coming right now, and all I've got to do is put the VR1 racing oil in it, and it's ready for tomorrow. After that, I've got the lower tins to modify and weld so they fit these super tins. I'm gonna paint them the color of the car, and I'm gonna paint the valve covers semi-gloss black so that, you know, when it's been scraped several times, it'd be simple for somebody to repaint them again, just a semi-gloss, then worrying about it if they were painted the color of the tins. And as for the coil, it's temporarily here because the air compressor is most definitely going to be hitting that, so it'll most likely, I don't want to do anything with on, this, on these tins, but it might get mounted right here. And then again, it might get mounted on the firewall. But I had the fuel pump to mount also, so not a lot of room in that area, so. And I got the wires, you know, wasn't too much to figure out. Take all the uh, fuel injector related, emissions related wiring and wrap it up and store it up in the corner of the firewall. So just in case somebody wants to put it back there. And yes, I do have the pulley that goes here for the AC, which I'm gonna put that on later after I detail this out. All right, well, that's where we are. So we're on the motor for the break-in. We had started it a couple of weeks ago with the exhaust that the customer wanted, and it just wasn't gonna, you know, it just way too much resistance. It was running way too hot on all the exhaust ports. So we had him change and get another exhaust. So we're going to complete the break-in and the tuning process. So that's where we're at right now. We ended up into 30 minutes into the break-in last time before we shut it down. So running a lot better with this new exhaust on it. Bigger diameter pipe, piping. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, of course, that's just the high temp paint smoking on it. It's sounding good. Oh, if you're wondering why the uh, dune buggy's back, it made it past its thousand miles. We had to dump the oil and readjust the valves. We're gonna retune it again. So uh, that's why that's here. All right, guys. 
We only got about five minutes left on the break in. Really nice, it's tuning up and I like to lose about 100 RPMs on the idle, but uh, we're not done yet. Timing's a little up a little bit, but temperatures are fine. Looks like we corrected it with the uh, exhaust. Hey guys, it's Dalton. Thanks for watching this video. If you guys liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and have a just bug in a day.